welcome back to my channel today I'm just going to be doing some really chilled out plant chores if you have some to do too you could do them at the same time and I'm also going to be answering your questions as well so thank you to everyone who sent in a question and let's get going I'm going to be repotting and staking this syngonium I have a pole here so we're going to be putting it on this and first thing I'm going to do is take it out of its pot and see what the roots look like. Okay, so your first question is how many years have you been collecting? And I'd say seriously collecting probably, probably a year or two. I'd say in the last two years was when I started collecting, but when I really, really started collecting was probably the last 12 months. Um, yeah, it kind of happened gradually for me. So I'd say, yeah, just the last kind of 12 months is when I've really seriously been getting into the hobby. But then in the year previous to that, I was collecting, but I wasn't collecting quite as fast as I have over the last 12 months. So. And the next question is, when and how your passion for plants started? I'd say probably about 12 months ago, I started to realise that taking care of plants and collecting plants, just having plants around in general, was really making me happy. And yeah, I was just observing myself one day doing plant chores, taking care of my plants and I just realised that it was really relaxing and it was really helping me. So I thought well yeah let's have some more of this. So it was really at that point that I started intentionally collecting house plants a little more. I've just before I carry on, I'll just show you the roots of this one. And it's actually not quite as root bound as I imagined. I was going to put it into a bigger pot. I'm just wondering if it might not be appropriate now that I've seen how many roots we've got going on. Well, that one is still a bit of a squeeze. I think I'm gonna put it in the new pot because I have to also fit the pole in there too, so. Yeah, that's going to work. So yeah, it was from that point that I just started collecting a bit more intentionally. And I didn't have my YouTube back, back then because my YouTube channel is only two months old. So yeah, I don't have any of that first year documented. But it was that first year really that I just started to really double down on the plants. And the plant care because like I say I saw how happy it was making me and I figured well if it's having this good effect on your mental health and you're really enjoying it then why not do more of it so yeah really that's all it was at first and then I slowly started collecting more and more plants until I got to the point I'm at now and yeah, it kind of just happened gradually really and I now find myself completely obsessed, which is great. It's a good obsession to have. I'm sure some of you also share the same obsession. It's, uh, it's a really nice hobby to have and that's why I've decided to get more and more into it. Okay, the next question is, 
What do your relatives think of this passion? Do they encourage you or is it the contrary? And the answer is, yeah, my relatives are really supportive. They are just happy that I'm happy really and you know some of them also share an interest in plants and in that case we can kind of share the interest together some of them don't but they're generally happy for me to be yeah doing something that makes me feel good and fulfills me okay so I now need to put this pole in here so need to just think of for a minute concentrate on where I'm going to put it let me see I kind of wanted it a little more central but I'm not sure if that's going to work out a little bit more of that old soil off much of this off as I can. Actually, this soil that this is in is really quite dense. I haven't, I haven't done anything to this since I bought it. It's still in the, it's still in the soil that it came in, and it's way more dense than I imagined it would be. So I'm kind of glad that I'm changing this soil because, yeah, that is just. Horrible dense soil. Doesn't appear to be any drainage materials in there. Maybe a little bit of perlite, but not not a huge amount. This is just a what I'm using is a mixture of cocoa coir, bark, and perlite. I don't really have a way of measuring how much I put of each one. I just tend to go by my gut feeling. It's certainly going to be a lot happier, I think, in this soil compared to what it was in. Now I'm going to try and... Okay, now I'm going to try and attach, I have some Velcro ties that I'm going to use to try and attach this. not actually used these before, but I thought they would be try and get the base of it attached. The trouble is there are a lot of vines in this. I did want to kind of centralise the pole a bit more but it was at risk of damaging the roots so, so 
if I can maneuver it a little bit. Okay, I'm getting somewhere. And the next question is, does your husband also love plants? And my husband is not quite as obsessed as I am. However, he does enjoy having the plants around and he's very supportive. He's always buying me plants, bless him. And yeah, he's 100% supportive of my plant hobby and he very often gets involved he might choose a plant or choose pots he comes and looks around the garden center with me as i say he's always surprising me with plants and yeah he does like having them around the home as well uh yeah he told me that so he likes having them around and he finds them relaxing and he likes the effect that they have on our home. And yeah, he is also really supportive of me doing this YouTube channel. He's always helping me and supporting me through it and yeah he encourages it because well he loves me and he wants me to be happy so yeah he does very much encourage the hobby which is lovely and i do like it when he gets involved sometimes you know sometimes he will choose a pot he likes or he will pick out a plant he likes or he'll give me his opinion on things and yeah it's nice i don't think i'd entrust my plants to him but <laughs> i'm happy that he enjoys them and that he finds them to be a benefit within our home i think that's really nice because i think whether we know it or not nature does help us quite a bit with our mental health. It has been proven, hasn't it, that going out into nature, being with nature, it does, it does have an effect on our mental health. And so to bring nature in, I think is just, yeah, really good for us. Whew, I've just taken my jumper off because this is making me really warm. Okay, let's see. I think I maybe should have pruned this before trying to get it on this pole, but never mind, we're here now. Where did I put that? These Velcro strips are pretty good. My first time using them. getting somewhere. I'm just going to clear off this 
dirt from the table. You can probably tell I'm not really a pro at this. I haven't done this much and I'm kind of learning as I go along so yeah. I may be mucking it up but it's fine, it's fine. Okay, I'm just going to read out the next question and it is, as a plant collector, do you find any difficulties at your daily life? As you're adding up more plant babes, we are adding up more mundane tasks. How are you coping with the time and energy for this? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's, um, I think becoming overwhelmed by a huge collection of plants is probably quite normal. I'd say I try to combat this by, firstly, I'm quite intentional about what I buy, about how many plants I buy, and also the type of plants I buy. So for example, I might make sure that I have the majority of my collection are easy care plants. And then I might have like a handful of plants that are a little bit more challenging, but I don't have an entire collection full of challenging plants so that takes the work down a little bit so I maybe I've got a small handful of plants that I need to keep my eye on a little more and the rest of them I know they're going to be fine so that kind of helps cut down on the workload making sure that the majority of my collection is fairly easy care and also something I tend to do is that if I have more than one of a certain plant, I might pop them up together so that I can combine them. And that's a pretty common way of cutting down on work. Um, and then there are other things I do. For example, when I water my plants, I fill a container with water, um, just a, like a plastic washing up bowl, and I fill it with water, filtered water I use, and then and then I put my plants into the water and sit them there for a while and let them soak up the water they need. And that way it's easy to just kind of put three or four plants in the water at once and it helps me speed up the watering process a little more. I don't know if anyone else does that, but I find it quite helpful for cutting down on watering time. But yeah, so far I'd say with my collection being fairly small, I haven't actually counted my plants. In fact, stay tuned because I'm going to do a new tour soon where I go around and do an updated plant tour. And for that I'm going to count the plants as well. So we'll see how many I actually have. But until then, I'm going to predict maybe... I must have less than 40 plants, surely. Maybe 30, something like that. I don't know. But it's not the hundreds that some people have got. So I think for that reason, I'm less stressed than I could be. I find the amount of plants that I have fairly manageable, really. And as I say, I think just being mindful of which plants I collect not collecting too many if I think I'm going to get overwhelmed. I know that's easier said than done when you love plants and you want to collect loads of plants, but I think if I were to overdo it and have hundreds and hundreds, that maybe I might neglect certain plants on accident. Not because I wanted to, but because I just had so much to do. But we'll see, I mean, I'm fairly new to the hobby, as I said before, so maybe I will come to a point where I think, wow, I've got too many plants now, I'm going to have to 
rein this in a bit but for now I don't tend to get that overwhelmed no I think because as I say my collection is still fairly small and maybe I have all that to come I think for me as well one of the things that I find really helpful is during the winter period there's far less to do and I tend to have quite a good rest then, a bit like my plants really. And I actually come out of winter wanting plant jobs to do because I, I've had such a break during the winter so I've, I've kind of got this renewed energy and I'm looking forward to uh, having lots to do again and then by the time summer comes to an end I've then got to the point where I think wow I'd really like a rest and winter comes along just at the right time and then I get that rest that I was asking for so I guess if I kind of go with the seasons then it sort of helps me and yeah okay this is what I have so far and I know because this plant has not been growing up the pole, it's going to maybe take a little bit of time to adjust um, because obviously it needs to move towards the light source, etc. It's quite near the top of that pole though. This is the top just here. So, uh, yeah, going up a little more than I thought. But we will need to give this a little time to sort of uh, move with the sun. But this is a start. And yeah, I'm gonna take a load of cuttings as well. For sure. Shall I do that now or shall I wait? Hmm. That's a start anyway. What I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna put the rest of the soil in. I'm not gonna water it because it was watered recently. And then I'm just gonna leave it for a bit and let these leaves just adjust um, to growing upwards instead of over and then once I've done that then I will take some cuttings because I'll be able to see better where I want to take them from so yeah that, that's a start uh, I might just, yeah. as I say I'm not the best at doing this so far I'm kind of just making it up as I go along. And I think I'm happy with that. I think this is a far better soil mixture that I have in here. It is far chunkier and better draining and yeah I'm just a lot happier to know that this plant has better soil as well as the pole. If I'd have realised the soil was that dense and awful, maybe I would have changed it sooner. I guess maybe that's something I should check for in the future. But, I mean, it's been okay. It's, it's survived. It's, it's flourished, so... It's fine. But yeah, I just don't like to think of my plants being in horrible, awful soil. It's not nice. I want them to have the best of everything. Okay, a little bit more soil on the front there. Yeah, I'm going to be ordering some potting mats soon because I don't actually have any yet and it would be very useful. <laughs> They're really cheap on Amazon so I should probably just go on there and order some on there. As I say, it's a start. We're gonna have to wait for it to kind of move with the light and everything. But yeah, I'm happy with that so far. Brilliant, on to the next job. Phew, well now I've put that to the side, going back to the last question, just to answer it a little bit more thoroughly. I think it's important to remember what you can commit to the hobby, what 
what is okay for you is different for all of us, isn't it? We've all got different amounts of spare time. And just be realistic. It's okay if you need to get rid of some plants if you feel overwhelmed or, you know, because this is a hobby, isn't it? It's supposed to be fun. That's what I always try to remember. I always want it to be fun and I want it to be enjoyable. So if I feel like I'm being overwhelmed by plant chores or things, I look for ways in which I can change that. For example, now and again, many people like to have a bit of a plant purge, maybe get rid of plants that they're just not feeding anymore, and then they've got a renewed enthusiasm for the plants that they do have. And I do do that sometimes. And like I say, I look for ways to water them quicker. And yeah, I just make sure that I don't have more than I can handle on my plate. And as I say, maybe that will change as time goes on. And if it does, then I may come back to this question and revisit it. But at the moment, I generally feel really happy and enthusiastic about looking after my plants. And I think I've got it just where I want it. And yeah. Okay, the next task I have to do, much more simple. I'm just gonna repot this peace lily. So let me read out the next question before I start that. The next question is, how do you stop adding plants to your collection? As a fellow plant lover, I have this problem. <laughs> the money factor is one problem. I have so many plants on my wish list that my heart mounts for them. Yes, I know what you mean. When you have a lot of plants that you really love and you just want them, don't you? You really want them badly, but the way I combat that is that I, and I know this is easier said than done, but I just practice patience and restraint. And I remind myself that I have all these lovely plants already. And whereas it would be nice to get some of my wish list plants, I certainly don't expect to get them. And I just remind myself really to put that energy and enthusiasm into the plants that I do have. And then when I do get new ones, it's just a lovely surprise. And yeah, I never buy more plants than I can afford. I would never get into debt. Um, I certainly don't pay out for plants that are heavily overpriced. I always stay grounded because as I say, it's only a fun hobby as long as you're in control of it. But if it gets in control of you, then it's, it's not going to be a fun hobby anymore. So yeah, I just, um, I just really put that enthusiasm into my existing plants and loving them. And I find that that, that really works for me. I don't find myself kind of wanting and needing plants. Occasionally there'll be an extra special plant that I really want, um, that I'd really love to get. For example, at the moment I am really excited at the thought of getting a Syngonium Albo, the variegated Syngonium. I would love to get one of those. However, they aren't exactly that readily available. They're not exactly hugely expensive online, but I'm not rushing out to get one. You know, I'm okay if I get it, I'm okay if I don't get it. I guess not being too attached is the way I deal with it. I'm, I'm fine if I don't get something and it doesn't really bother me. I already have plenty of plants to enjoy. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy either way. When I get new plants, it's kind of like a nice bonus that I wasn't expecting. And yeah. Okay, let's see what's the next question. We have, have you ever felt embarrassed from a plant or a plant category? I would say no, definitely not. I think 
we are all different, aren't we? We all like different types of plants and certainly no one should be embarrassed for liking something that someone else doesn't. Even if it's a plant everyone else hates, if you love it, then you go for it. It's no one's, no one's business. So no, I've never ever been embarrassed by my choice of plants. Um, as I say, we're all different. What I love might not be what you love and vice versa. That's why it's such a fun hobby because of the diversity and all the different all the different opinions and the different likes and dislikes. So no, I think whatever plants you're into, you should be loud and proud about it. Never be embarrassed. Even if it's just a really common plant, like some people really love spider plants, for example. Spider plants are really common, so it doesn't matter. If you enjoy them, then that's all that matters. So yeah, be loud and proud and love whatever you love. Okay. Well, that's nice. That peace lily has got a lovely new pot and I'm feeling good about that. This peace lily was actually a rescue, I believe. My mother-in-law gave me this one and she likes to get things off the sale section and she's actually got me addicted to the sales section too but this was one from there and it was looking a bit sad because it was in the sales section but it wasn't badly damaged or anything it didn't have any pests it was just a little bit sort of sad looking a few brown leaves so I chopped those off obviously and I've had this since last year so it has um, had a little time to get healthy but now look at it it's looking lovely and now it's got a nice new pot for spring I am so excited to see where it goes next yeah so that's another job done next I want to take some snake plant cuttings and um, these are going to be for propagation and this is the plant that I'm going to be propagating from got quite a lot of leaves so it should be fine with losing a couple and these are clean scissors they just have a little bit of soil on them and it's clean soil so that's fine okay and let's see what the next question is Okay, the next question is, has any plant ever died on you? If yes, have you tried your luck with it again? Yes, of course, I have killed plants in my time. We all have, there's no shame in it. We've all done it, it's fine. Yeah, of course, I've killed many plants. What have I killed? When I first started collecting plants, I actually, one of the first plants that I kind of intentionally bought was a Calathea, I think it's called the Calathea Lepidina. It's got like the leopard color on it. Anyway, this uh, Calathea, I bought it thinking, wow, I love this. This is gonna be great. And you can imagine what happened, can't you? Yes. The poor thing slowly died because I had no idea what I was doing. None at all. I tried everything. I tried watering it more, watering it less. In the end, it just died a real slow death. And no, I've never tried that one again. I have tried other Calatheas though, and I have killed one more Calathea. I can't remember what type it was. It was a different type of Calathea. Um, I do have one living Calathea though, so. And what else? I have a terrible track record with peperomias. Any kind of peperomia, I am terrible with. So recently I lost a peperomia happy bean and it was not a happy bean. I tried so hard for this plant, I really did. I looked up its care, I used a water meter every time I watered it. I tried so hard to give it everything it wanted, but it just, started going yellow and 
with each passing week more leaves started going yellow and it was creeping up the plant and I couldn't work out what, what on earth to do about it. Um, in the end I just had to accept defeat and yeah let it go. I threw it away because it was, just wasn't happening. So yeah, Peperomias. I have also killed some other peperomias too. Um, I can't remember the specific names of them though. However, the other part of your question, would you try them again? I've got to the point now where I will never try another peperomia again. I'm not interested. But the thing is, of course, what I find difficult might not be what you find difficult. We all have different environments and we all have different different plants that we find easy or hard and so you know some of you out there might be saying well peperomies are really easy and yeah maybe you've got maybe you've got that down you've got the care right you've got the environment right but for me it's just not happening But yeah, peperomias, calatheas, what else? In the early days, back before I actually was collecting plants properly, I did definitely kill a few succulents, um, overwatering, you know, as usual. But as I say, that was before I had started collecting properly, so I was just sort of dabbling. And yeah, I had no clue what I was doing so I'm just cutting this bit like this this is just to remind me which is the end that I'm going to be putting in water because I'm going to be leaving these cuttings for a few days to callus over just to let them dry out and it, when I, if I do this to them, I can remember which is the which is the part that I'm going to put in water because you need to make sure it's the lower part that you put in water. This way, I will not be able to forget. I did propagate some snake plants last year. Yeah, I think I only did one, but oh, I'm not going to forget which is the end of that one, am I? But I've done it. I've done it now. There we go. Okay, so I will now let those dry out for a few days, and then after that time, I will pop them in some water. So I'm just going to clean up now. Okay, I'm also noticing my snake plants need a clean whilst I'm here, so I'm going to do that now. First, let me read out another question. Do you have any pets? Uh, no, I don't, so it's a really short answer to that. I don't have to worry about toxic plants to pets or anything like that. No pets, no kids, it's just me and my husband. And as long as my husband doesn't start eating the plants, we're all good. What is your favourite plant category? Hmm. But if by category you mean type of plant, it, this is probably one that's going to change as time goes on, but at the moment I reckon probably philodendrons. I am in love with philodendrons right now, but a prediction for what might be my favourite category next, possibly syngoniums because I'm seeing loads of syngoniums at the moment that I love. So at the moment it's philodendrons, in the future it may be syngoniums. Aroids versus cactuses versus others, which suit you best? Which do you love more? Hmm, I do have quite a few aroids, I have to say. And um, I wasn't really a conscious choice, I just happened to have collected quite a few of them. Um, I'd say probably lowest on my list at the moment would be succulents and cactuses because even though I do like them, I kind of feel like I've come to the end of 
what I want to do with them. I'm more interested in the more tropical plants. So I'd say, yeah, probably aroids. Um, just because I have quite a lot of them. But I'm always discovering new things, so who knows what will be next. And the next question is, do you use any lights, fertilizers, etc.? And I don't use any lights, no. I only have the natural light that I'm working with in here. It is something that I might consider trying out, probably next winter now, because we're going into spring now. And I'm thinking I might try it out next winter. So we'll see. Fertilizers, yes I do fertilize my plants. Um, I have been using a baby bio fertilizer, an organic one, that's the one that I used last year. But I've actually bought a new one to try this year. It's just one that was locally available here, a liquid one. I will put a picture of that one up for you. But I don't know what that one's gonna be like yet, but I shall see what it's like and let you know. Regarding other things to do with plants, I can't really think of anything else that I use. Um, I do sometimes mix a neem oil and dish soap spray, which I spray to prevent pests. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I don't tend to use pesticides. I haven't had to yet. Um, I hope that I won't have to because I don't really like to spray pesticides indoors and they're also bad for the environment so I'm hoping that it won't come to that. Um, I've never actually had a really severe pest infestation. Um, I did use one plant to spider mites some years ago now and I have experienced fungus gnats. Um, but other than that, I don't think I've had thrips yet. I used to be terrified of thrips, but I kind of know it's inevitable that I'm going to have an experience with them at some point because I expect all plant collectors do. So I've decided to let go of my fear and just accept that it's part of it. But I do do everything I can to prevent pests rather than treat them once they're here. So. For example, you see me cleaning leaves, I do this a lot. Um, shower my plants as well in the shower. Make sure they're clean. Um, you know, that tends to knock off pests when you clean them. And yeah, so far, like I said, I haven't really had to deal with too many, but I imagine as my collection gets bigger, I probably will. So. I'll probably have to look into some more solutions. I've certainly heard all the horror stories about thrips and things like that, but as I say, I'm not going to live in fear because I don't want to stop enjoying the hobby just because of my fear of thrips. So yeah, that takes us to the end of today's video. These are nice and clean and I'm going to go and clean up, but I'm going to hoover because I've got a little bit of soil on the floor. No big deal. Might go and look at potting mats because I could do one of those. I really hope you enjoyed today's Q&A and plant care. Let me know in the comments if you got some plant care done too. What did you do? And yeah, if anyone has any further questions in the future, feel free to ask. I'm happy to do another one of these if you like this sort of thing. And yeah. Take care and look after yourself and I will see you next time.